Okay, so what you just saw was the first successful flight of my completely custom thrust vector controlled rocket over here. So this vehicle is 100% custom. Um, if you've seen any thrust vector controlled rockets online, they probably belong to Joe Barnard at BPS Space. And after talking to Joe, I got a few pointers and I kind of started down the road of doing my own thrust vector, thrust vector controlled rockets. Um, mine versus Joe's are a little different. Um, I'm kind of starting completely from scratch. Joe's, again, about three years in, so he's, uh, he's a little more built up. But So a lot of times there's no real guide to any of this, so I'm just kind of figuring it out as I go. Um, the, the rocket as a whole has uh, a few core components. It has a thrust vector control mount that controls the engine uh, that angles the thrust vector and allows the rocket to steer in flight. The most important part of the rocket is the flight computer. The flight computer in the middle of the rocket here controls all the functions of the rocket. It does everything from maintain orientation, keep time, and keep the rocket safe in the event of a failure. Um, this was all a challenge because the software is by far the hardest part of this entire thing. The thrust vector control mount is the second hardest part. It has to be reasonably accurate. It has to um, withstand the thrust of the engine, and in withstanding the thrust, it has to um, keep the rocket on target throughout the entire flight. Um, the commands from the computer have to make it to the uh, thrust vector mount, and when the commands hit the thrust vector mount, it has to have a quick response. So some of that's software, some of that's hardware. Um, and both of those things have taken a little while to figure out and make work, make them work well. Um, there's a few other extras on this thing. Um, it has uh, mounting at the bottom for legs and uh, deployable fins up here. There's also a parachute up in the nose. Uh, this is pretty standard to any kit rocket you might see on the market. To assist in propulsive landing at the top here, there is a set of deployable fins. Um, these aren't your standard grid fins. They're a, uh, a flat plane fin, much like a, uh, a lawn dart when they deploy. Um, they deploy via an iChrome wire that goes around, and that uses one of the pyrotechnic channels on the flight computer. No matter how much testing you do, you can never fully prepare for that first flight. So after doing a ton of testing behind the scenes, I ended up going into the first flight with some confidence but there's always the possibility of things going wrong, and that's exactly what happened. Um, moments after liftoff, the pad retract mechanism did not move as fast as it needed to. The rocket ascended far quicker than I would have anticipated, and as the pad strong back began to pull away, the rocket was already halfway up and there was contact made on the, uh, the vehicle stabilizer at the top. Due to this contact, the rocket started to rotate. Uh, once the vehicle started taking on a rotation, it was kind of unstoppable and the, uh, the controller most likely couldn't keep up, and I kind of uh, scraped that off as a failure. There was a very interesting reverse thrust moment, though, where the vectoring system kind of regained control, and somehow the rocket was able to reorient itself just enough to put the engine in the direction that it needed to be to stop it from hitting the ground. Um, the first flight really didn't prove anything other than, wow, this was going to be a lot harder than I thought. After looking at how quickly the rocket was able to take off from the pad, I adjusted the movement speed of the launch pad strong back. This little bit of delay allowed enough time for the strong back and the stabilizers to get out of the way of the rocket for it to leave. Um, I didn't really have any leads on what was wrong with the first flight, so this was my only lead going into the second flight. I also took the liberty of raising the control logic gains inside the rocket to tune it up, thinking that would probably help. So during the second flight, it had an issue with the thrust vector mount vectoring the wrong way, which you can very, very clearly see on takeoff. The rocket begins to curve wildly out of frame and then begins to head towards the ground. The vectoring system was actually steering harder into the ground the more the rocket leaned, 
so it antagonized itself until it completely smashed itself, which didn't go too well. So after reviewing the footage, I realized the vector mount was programmed in reverse of what it should be, so that was a simple fix. I repaired what I needed to and I got it ready for another flight. Again, I raised the control gains a little more, but I never actually knew exactly what the control gains needed to be. By the time I got to the third flight, I was a little more confident. The vehicle was a little more trimmed out, I had a better understanding of how to center the engine inside the vector system, and I knew the gains needed to be higher than the previous flight, so I kept raising the control gains. During that flight, it showed a little more promise by flying straight for the first few seconds and then veering more and more and more over the course of the flight. The vehicle should have opened its parachute when it detected the, the turn, but after re reviewing the code, I found out that I had only coded the positive ranges instead of the negative ranges for its steering. So it just happened to go the wrong way for how I had programmed it. I revised the, the code on the deployment system. I made a better black powder charge to open the parachute. I primed the engine so that it would light every time using a little bit of black powder. And I used a computer model to determine the gains. It's almost like using math to figure out things was better than just guesstimating. So I created a Excel program that made a one-dimensional simulation of the rocket rotating about its center of mass. I put in all the information from the actual structure, um, the engine, the controller. I tried to model it as best I could from the Arduino code into Excel, which was a little tricky, but when you don't have MATLAB or Simulink or any good software, it's a little bit better of an option than than nothing. I tuned the rocket using the Excel program, I uploaded the gains, and then what followed was honestly just pure magic. After only four flights, I was able to get a thrust vectoring rocket to fly in a pretty straight line. Now. There's other sources of error in here, and the software is by no means perfect, but it does actually work, and it works pretty well for being made out of pretty simple parts and a lot of 3D printed hardware. The whole vehicle weighs in at about 750 grams with the maximum engine load in it. The, with the legs attached to the rocket, it will add about 100 grams extra, so with two engines, and a full set of four legs, the vehicle weighs in at only about 850 grams. So what's next? I intend to propulsively land this. The whole vehicle is made with the intention of being able to perform exactly as a real Falcon 9 does. So that includes operating using the upper stage after the first stage burns out, um, and propulsively landing the first stage after the flight. To do this, I have four legs that are deployable from the bottom of the rocket. It has deployable fins up at the top, and a second engine that will decelerate the rocket without the need for a parachute. In fact, eventually I intend to fly this without a parachute at all so that it can land as efficiently as possible on the minimum engine load. Next up, I'll be installing a custom flight controller into it. Um, this controller is my own design. It uses a uh, printed circuit board and a lot of breakout boards uh, from Adafruit. And each of the parts I've just kind of figured out through trial and error of what works, what doesn't, and how to, uh, how to write software to each thing. I've developed a brand new flight computer for the vehicle on printed circuit board that's far cleaner, far lighter, and far more durable than what's currently in the vehicle. The current flight computer is built on a breadboard with soldered jumpers in place and a lot less capability overall. 
It's a little smaller, there's less real estate for the components, and only two pyrotechnic channels. The next few flights will run on the brand new Talon flight controller. Um, the Talon is only in its first version, so it's still got a lot of room to grow. Um, it doesn't have any data logging capability as of yet. I collect a lot of my information via uh, video and looking at the angles of the rocket relative to time and then returning that back into plots and charts to see how the, uh, the accelerations and the rotations are moving over time. I have a pretty good understanding of what to look for in a PID loop uh, control unit. My first thrust vector control rocket wasn't this actually. Um, it was a uh, model SLS using a quadcopter flight controller. Um, I was able to adapt that into the application by treating it as if it was an airplane and kind of tricking the controller using our, an Arduino. Um, this is by far not the best way to do things. It's passable. Using the new Talon flight controller, I'm going to be testing out the fin deployment, the leg deployment, and eventually the stage separation and retropropulsive landing. So a second engine is going to be housed in here eventually with a new thrust vector mount and a whole new system for gimbling the engines. The following flights after that, once I can get things a little more ironed out, I'll be running a second stage on top of the first stage. Um, this will also involve some testing of the upper stage, but it's almost a copy of the first stage computer inside of this upper stage unit. Um, the upper stage is much simpler than the first stage. Uh, it's comprised of just a nose cone, a parachute bulkhead with a parachute, and a flight computer and thrust vector mount inside. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all enjoyment in the project. It makes me uh, really excited to be able to share this stuff with other people. It's, uh, it's a very fun project, it's, very, it's been very engaging, and it's a, a huge learning experience. Um, if you have any comments or questions, I'd love to answer them. Just put them down in the comments section below. On Instagram, you'll get the most up-to-date information on what I'm working on and how things are progressing. Um, I'm not very fast on my upload schedule, so I try and hold out until I have nice quality content to upload, so Instagram fills the void between launches for all the testing and other content that I, I've been working on. Um, these projects are very expensive, so I've opened up a Patreon. Um, by going to that Patreon, you can pledge money to support the project. All the money goes directly to the project and allows me to launch things faster to deliver content to you. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.